every year we identify the top winning cities in Europe where, where we see the growth potential for real estate occupier demand. We built an index called uh, European Cities Growth Index, ECGI, and this year the results suggest that uh, London and Paris remain in the leading positions. And it is a fairly straightforward answer given their size, given their competitiveness, their ability to adopt quickly to change, their skilled labor and many other aspects that drive those cities. So we definitely like both London and Paris. Secondly, the Nordic region cities. The Nordic cities are coming very strongly. Uh, they have a good growth potential. They have the, the edge that most of the European cities don't have. They have invested in uh, green industries, wind farms, uh, in pharma, their obesity drugs, in life sciences, and that makes cities such as Stockholm or Copenhagen coming up quite high in our league tables as well. Cities that are not performing that well would be the smaller European cities, mostly in Central and Eastern Europe, which which struggle with the cost of living, high inflation, uh, interest rates, but most importantly, they haven't managed to recover as well post-COVID. So that post-pandemic um, uh, aftermath is, is there and is affecting them. And it's also their size. The Central and European cities are relatively small, so the competitiveness is and the innovation is not, not there. Two exceptions could be Warsaw and Prague where we saw the reversion of the brain drain of the early 2000s and people coming back in that middle income gap. So it's, uh, that's, that's actually giving a bit of a boost to both Warsaw and Prague. We have added to the index this year some sustainability elements to look at how livable the cities are. Uh, for instance, the extreme uh, heat waves or weather conditions. And the cities that are affected the most uh, obviously are being penalized by it in the index. It would affect um, Rome, for instance, and other smaller regional Italian cities the most.